Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for another all-American review, y'all. All right. Okay, look. <laughs> Bucked up about my purchases from Walmart yesterday. <laughs> it's the little things these days it is the little things and you're gonna let me have this okay but either way let's get into all american okay now that i'm done like loving my mtv sweater so olivia is starting her podcast you guys okay and the episode starts off with her talking about how she lives in a bubble and how a lot of people who live in beverly hills live in a bubble we, in general, as people, live in a bubble. And some things don't affect us. And if they don't affect us, then some of us don't care about it. Which is not how anyone should be. Okay, just saying. If we out here proclaiming to be good people, then a part of being a good person is caring about things that don't just affect you directly, but other people because it's right or wrong. Period. You know what I'm saying? So, that's just how, kind of how I feel about that. But... Specifically, we're talking about how African-American people can just be killed for doing any old thing in their lives. They can be sitting on their couch eating cereal and someone will come to their apartment door and shoot and kill them. They can be barbecuing and someone will call the police. They can be in a store and come out and find that someone has blocked them into a parking spot because they parked in an illegal spot. It's not a police officer, just a random, you know, Caucasian person. So yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I'm so glad that they want to bring attention to it because the show is kind of on the heavy side. But at the same time, they're going to make me mad with the way they're going, you know, for lack of a better term, balls deep into just upset and turmoil. Now that Spencer has quit football and we're dealing with black people getting accosted on a daily basis in gentrified neighborhoods, you know, it's just stressful. Okay, this episode and everything was just stressful. Then we got Tyrone and, and Coop acting crazy. Like, it's a lot going on, all right? So, on top of the podcast situation, Darnell and Spence are out at the park throwing the ball around, okay? Darnell looks happy-go-lucky, which makes me worry that somebody's gonna try to kill him. After they finish throwing the ball around, they have to have the conversation about why Spencer has decided to quit football, even though he convinced Darnell not to quit football. And Spence says it's because every time he steps out on the field, all he could think about is his dad sitting in that chair. And that makes me so sad that he's now tied his talent, you know, not his only talent, but one of his talents to his father's passing in such a way. You know what I'm saying? That just kind of made me sad. Meanwhile, we're having this heart wrenching moment and Tyrone is nearby lurking being a stalker the way he's been this entire episode increasing my nerves okay <laughs> increasing increasing I'm worried about Darnell I'm worried about everybody Olivia has her cotillion coming up oh yes okay y'all know she went and, and became a part of the uh the, the black ladies that like to wear white dresses and have brunch okay because I forgot the name of <laughs> I forgot the name of their little organization, okay? But um, it's the cotillion around the corner, and they've been learning a dance. And Asher is supposed to be Olivia's date, but he hasn't shown up because he's been playing football. Oh, yes, he's been practicing football. He's all about football. And to the extent that he's practicing two to three times a day, working out in the gym, pushing it to the limit two to three times a day, that's too much. That's way too much. What's going on here? Like, I know Asher is feeling the burn along with feeling, you know, the heaviness that now his life is kind of in his hands more so than his parents or the school. Like, he has to work so hard so that he can get this opportunity. And I get all of that, but you can't destroy yourself in the process because you'll have nothing left once you get there, if you get there. Because this is the type of stuff that have you getting in your own way and ruining your own opportunity because you want to be overzealous, do too much, and not pay attention to the rules, okay? We're going to get to that in a minute because there are rules. 
So Coop is trying to talk patients into going to the cotillion. You know, everybody wants to go. It's a free party with pigs and blankets, okay? Girl, I ain't got no damn pigs and blankets at no cotillion. <laughs> What's wrong with it, Jesus, okay? But either way, she really wants to go with the rest of the homeboys and the homegirls in a clique. And Patience doesn't really seem to want to go. There's some apprehension there. And we don't know why. We're just kind of like, okay, what's going on with Patience, you know? And then we see Coop with her mom, okay? Everything with Coop is happening down at this cafe. And the mom gives her this fly suit that she got for her. The mom is really trying to be involved in Coop's life. And to be a part in a way where she's not, you know, disappearing as soon as Patience come, you know, come around, you know? So some parents do that, you know, they, they want to be around, they want to be there for you, but they cannot watch you have PDA with your lesbian lover or your gay lover or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, it'd be difficult for some of these parents out here sometimes. So the mom is really trying and I, I can appreciate that because I tell you, she was terrible when we first met her. I mean, terrible. You didn't know Coop was going to be gay. Get out of here. I, get out of here. Okay. You, Tamika, okay, Coop, hello, come on. Then, as Coop is looking at her lovely suit, she sees across the room that Patience is giggling a little bit too hard at the bar with some pretty young lady. And so she goes over like, what, what is this? What's going on here? And like, her mood was automatically, you cheating on me. Like, there was no in-between. I was like, Coop, why are you so upset as if this girl couldn't just be a friend of hers? But I guess it was a vibe. Patience says that it's just her friend Luna. They go way back. Coop is just looking like, oh, y'all go way back, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Luna's like, oh my God, it's nice to meet you. She didn't tell me her girlfriend was so beautiful. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? And Coop is just like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she still don't trust nothing that's going on right now. And it just kind of seems out of nowhere, right? Was it just me or did it kind of seem like Coop was tripping? So y'all, then Matt Springer, Super Bowl MVP football player, comes to Beverly and he wants to spend some time with the football players, okay? He's there to help and be there for practice and training and it seems suspect already. While the kids are practicing, he walks up to Asher and Jordan and says, oh, he sees the dream team in the twos of them, okay? And he would really, really like to push it to the limit with them. Okay, do they think they can stay after practice for some drills that they all going to be going through? You know, he can see them doing really well in the future. But the way he made it sound, it was as if he wasn't just going to be, you know, staying for a little while and then going back home somewhere. You know, it sounded like he was trying to stick around. Asher agreed to stay after practice, even though he had promised Olivia that he was going to make it to her final rehearsal for the cotillion. So yeah, he's really not making her a priority now, is he? And then we see Detective Gabriel floating around the field, and I'm just like, oh, here we go. Detective Gabriel comes over to flex on Billy and tell him how he's the one that brought Matt Springer to Beverly. Billy wants him to understand that this is his team. Like, I don't know how hard that is for you to comprehend, but this is my team, sir. Detective Gabriel don't hear none of that, okay? This is Detective Gabriel's team as far as he is concerned. And it's obvious that he's kind of trying to push Billy out. Maybe bring Matt Springer in to be the football coach for Beverly. Spence is working like a dog per usual and Tyrone is lurking and being a stalker per usual. And Spence goes up to him like, what you doing here, Tyrone? I'll get you something to go, brother. Okay. And Tyrone is like, you know, I have a real threatening energy right now. <laughs> okay just real threatening energy and he's talking about coop and mrs baker and how they tried to take his freedom away and it's just like no no you were a gangbanger and you shot somebody what are you talking about what are you talking about that's illegal you can get arrested for that and it doesn't matter like why do you think you were supposed to get away with doing that are you insane something's wrong with tyrone and the fact that they didn't do a psyche vow on him worries me he needs to be in somebody's facility behind some type of electric door like he just makes me you know worrisome 
very, very worrisome. And he's making Spence worrisome because now you're threatening Billy Baker's wife and you're threatening the old girl, Tamika Coop. We don't have time for this. Y'all know Spence going to have to figure out something to do because he always puts the weight of all of the world on his shoulders, even when he's at work. Spence and Coop meet up. And Spence is trying to stay close to Coop, but she sees it as him being clingy. He don't got no girlfriend. He ain't got no football. He needs to go find something to do because he's doing too much right now as far as Coop is concerned. But I don't think that she understands that he's staying close because he feels the need to try to protect her. Spence tells Coop that Tyrone has been lurking around and stalking him and everything. And she's just like, man, look, I got to live my life. I can't be worried about that. I said... You should be, but okay. Then Spence meets up with the OG Lamar Tate because I don't remember what his name is on this show, and that's his real name, but he's the OG, okay? So he meets up with the OG. OG is also Kia, the little chick that he's going to the cotillion with, little pretty brown-skinned girl. That's her uncle, all right? So they meet up behind the gate, back of somebody's house, and Lamar says, look, bruh, I know Tyrone is out here lurking and stalking. So here's something for a little protection. And he hands him a bag and there's a gun inside. And I was just like, yeah, this doesn't feel right. Even though you feel like you don't like the fact that he's walking around with no protection, knowing somebody is stalking and lurking <laughs> and wanting to kill people, you still feel like him having a gun puts him in more danger than before. I don't know why. And I'm a Southern person and I like guns. So I don't know why I feel like that, but that's how they made me feel. So then Spence goes to dance class with Kia and Olivia is there pissed off because Asher didn't show up. Remember, he had to stay after practice with Matt Springer. Kia suggests that if Jordan is free, she can go with Jordan because he's cute. And Spencer can go with Olivia since Asher doesn't seem to be very interested in, in, in anything that Olivia has going on right now. So Olivia goes to see him at the gym in the showers, just walks right on in. <laughs> okay, people got their meat out and she just walking in like it ain't nothing. And she tells him that he's off the hook for the cantillion. Since he couldn't find time to be there for her rehearsal, she's found someone else to be her partner. He was trying to like argue that he wanted to go with her, but then he just ends up saying that his future is more important than some stupid dance that she didn't even really want to go to in the first place. I was just like, yeah, that wasn't the right thing to say. This took a turn. Something's wrong. Coop talks to Patience about how she's been feeling about this Luna character. Come to find out Patience and Luna used to go together. Yeah, they used to be girlfriend and girlfriend. Coop is now feeling some type of way about the fact that Patience hid that tidbit of information from her. Oh, and that's also the reason why Patience didn't really want to go to the cotillion because Luna will be here for the cotillion. That's why she's here, baby. So she can go to the cotillion too. <laughs> I say, oh, oh. Oh, Coop. Spence said he's had it up the hill with all of this stalking and lurking. And now he's got this piece. So he goes to see Tyrone. And he tells Tyrone that he gonna leave Miss Baker and Coop alone before things get out of hand. Tyrone says, oh, what you think you about to threaten me? You think you hard or something like that? Please know that you are no longer the golden child out here. You ain't nothing but another nigga. I could definitely do something to you. I could put some hands on you. Spence says that Tyrone is just jealous that he ain't got no damn life. And if anything happens to Coop or Mrs. Baker, he will be coming after him. Hella high water. You ain't going to be able to stop him. And we all know how once Spence gets something into his mind, it's basically an action hero movie. Bent on revenge and self-destruction. The night of the cotillion, Coop's mom is being super supportive and taking pictures and basically playing paparazzi for Coop and her fly ass suit. Coop is like, you know what? You're right. My mom is trying. All right, let's get into this. Let's take these pictures. All right, I'm excited. And then here come Luna walking over and Luna actually hugs Coop and Coop just got this look on her face like this. I'm like, you really got this type of animosity to a film? <laughs> like, I get it. Like, they went together, but, and we all women, but essentially, like, man, I, you too, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, 
And I don't know studs to be that pressed, you know, in situations like this, you know. I mean, but I be around a lot of, like, New Orleans, you know. We don't care. We act like the men act. We don't care. Like, you know, I don't care. Like, I'm going to flirt with everybody. We just flirt, okay? I'm going to flirt. I'm not going to sing it because it's an R. Kelly song. But it is also a twister song. But Coop is acting so ugly with this girl, and it just don't feel right. I'm just like, would she really react this way? Like... I don't know. Like, I'm just saying, y'all, I've been around a lot of lesbians in my life, okay? Um, I don't know if, you know, like, if, if that would have went down in this specific way unless you were already in some type of jealous, controlling, abusive relationship. And that's not what was going on between Patience and Coop prior. So, I don't know. So, Billy is on his way to the cotillion and Asher is in the gym working out. Billy stops and talks to him for a second and says, look, bro, you dating my baby girl. And I know that right now football is the most important thing because when I was your age, it was for me too. But that's my kid. And you told her you were going to be there for her. And Ash is like, well, she told me not to come. Billy said, look, I can't tell you what to do. Okay. But I'm going to just say, think about it. Jordan brings Layla to her table. Okay, I don't know why she was standing outside the door like she was scared to walk in. I'm like, you didn't got dressed and came this far, girl. Go sit down. Like, I don't understand what was going on here. This scene made me feel like something was about to happen between Jordan and Layla. I didn't understand. Like, it just seemed so out of place. Spence, Olivia, and Kia are backstage, and Kia is kind of losing it because Jordan hasn't shown up yet, but she doesn't know that he's already there. But you know, there he is showing up at the last moment and everybody you know stands to their cotillion attention so that they can walk out and be presented okay and then they you know do their little dance and everything it was nice olivia was stressing about asha not being there at first but once they did that performance i was like child you need to be glad <laughs> look Look, Asher could have totally surprised us, but ultimately, do we really think that Asher was going to be able to perform that choreography to that extent? They could have got body doubles, but there was there were a lot of close-ups, so that's why I'm kind of like, I don't know, y'all. I don't know, man. I feel like the story happened a certain way because it, it, the dance scene looked best. If it was Spencer doing it and not Asher doing it. And I'm just not going to say nothing else about it. But it was fire choreography. I really enjoyed it. So Coop and Patience are sitting down at the table talking about how disappointing the evening has been. I said, where y'all been at? I've been enjoying myself. I wasn't even there. Luna comes over and Coop is like, damn girl, you can't read the room. Like we in the middle of a negative com conversation and you come over here with smiles and shit. Like, can you give us a moment? And Patience is like, you know, no, I'm so sorry. You know, kind of like apologetic for the way Coop was talking to Luna. Luna was like, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was a whole thing. I was like, Coop, you being an asshole right now. What's going on with you? Coop gets up and walks away. Layla is sitting at her table watching Kia and Spencer dance. So Jordan comes over and says, let's go and break that shit up. <laughs> so they get up and he takes Kia to dance. And then Layla and Spencer go in and have a cha-cha-cha. And I was just kind of like, oh, so we're going to go back to this? Because for a second there, I was like, is this relationship over or what? Like, I wasn't sure. Meanwhile, Olivia goes over to Coop and she tells her about Luna. So Olivia says, oh, well, let's, let's Instagram stalk her. Like, we'll find out everything about her in five minutes. So they pull up her egg and they start looking up and down her egg. And the look on Olivia's face told us that there was something that Coop didn't really want to see on that egg. Coop goes over to confront patients about hiding that Luna was her first, not just a girlfriend, not just an ex. Oh no, the one that turned her out. And not only that, Luna is an artist and would paint patients with and without towels on all the time. So yeah, quite uncomfortable. Patience says, I don't know what's wrong with you, but you've been tripping ever since JP chose me to work with over you. And now you tripping out and jealous over this situation with Luna. I don't know what's going on with you, Coop, but you acting crazy to me. And Coop says, you know, I'm acting like this because I love you. And Patience says, I don't want to be loved like this. I said, oh, you better be adult about it. I don't want to be in a tumultuous relationship with you. Because when I was her age, child, tumultuous relationship was everything. <laughs> you love all that, that fighting and getting finger fucked. Patience says that she needs a break 
Coop says, how convenient that you need a break now that your ex is back in town. I said, oh, she still don't get it, huh? She still don't get it. Oh, poor Coop. Spencer and Layla have a moment out alone on the balcony like this is Cinderella or some shit. And they kiss. But right when they, you know, really about to get into the kiss, Spencer backs away. And Layla thinks it's because Spencer must have another girlfriend or he's getting serious with somebody else or he just plain old doesn't want her. But that's not it. Spencer has done his research and he says they say it's not good for you to get emotionally involved with somebody when you're still going through recovery. So I don't want to get involved in anything if it's gonna like you know mess up your recovery situation but if you ready if you think you emotionally stable to, to to do this i'm down but if not i'll wait for you too and i was just like everybody needs a spencer at least at one point in their life everybody needs a spencer jeez louise just tugging on my heartstrings jordan is on his instagram and sees a picture of jj with matt springer and something in the comments led him to believe that Matt Springer isn't going anywhere. So he takes the post over to Billy to show it to him. His job might be in jeopardy. And Billy was like, son, you seem upset about that. I feel like if this was a few months ago, you would be happy about it. And Jordan was like, nah, man, the Baker name is on the back of my jersey too, dad. Like at the end of the day, okay? And Billy was like, all right, son, don't you worry about it. I'll, I'll take care of it. And I just kind of felt like, oh, I'm so glad. Because like Jordan was really aggravating the hell out of me with the way he was treating his dad. His parents, both of them, but specifically Billy. Like, you're a screw up, son. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop it. Calm down. Y'all, Olivia actually ended up getting an award for her community service and her podcast. And she gets up and she gives this amazing speech about how she didn't expect to be touched by the women of the club the way she has been. But they have definitely inspired her to do more, to be involved, to care, and to take action. And I was just all, I was all in all of this. Like, this was so great. This was really great writing right here. And after she's done giving her speech and everybody's like hugging her and congratulating her, Asher comes in with the flower and he looks nice, but then he gets upset because he sees her hugging Spencer. And it's just like, well, you know, everybody's fam and friends around here. She just got an award. He's mad because he didn't know she was getting an award. She's like, I didn't know I was getting an award. What are you doing here? And he was like, look, I know I had a lot going on, but I really wanted to be here for you. But I see that you don't need me because you got Spencer over there. And he flipping out. And Billy walks over there and says, son, I think it's time for you to leave because he was getting loud and irate and it was like what is wrong with you asher this ain't even your style lately like what's wrong with you lamar picks up kia from out front to dance and spencer was walking her down to the car and when she gets in the car the og tells spencer that he's sorry about that little situation meaning that i, I shouldn't have gave you that gun you know that's probably what he's trying to say but Spencer was like, nah, man, I appreciate it. You was just trying to help in the way that you knew how, and I appreciate that. The OG tells him, bro, look, I gave you that gun, but you're going to have to use it to get rid of Tyrone's ass because he is just evil, and he just wants to hurt somebody. So he's not going to stop. I'm like, oh, damn, somebody going to have to kill Tupac again. Meanwhile, Tyrone is rolling up on Darnell telling him, oh, yeah, you that football player, huh? You got to make sure you protect yourself. Stay safe out there. It was weird, and Darnell wasn't picking up on the vibe, and he was giving this innocent, happy-go-lucky vibe, and it just really, really made my nerves bad. Back at the cotillion, Coop sits down at her mom's table, and her mom is like, what's going on? And she was like, I messed it up with patience. I've just been acting crazy. I understand why she doesn't love me. I'm like, oh, it must have set in. Uh, like five minutes. It's set in now. Okay. Her mom says, look, you and patience love each other. Y'all will figure it out. It'll be okay. Spence comes over to, to the table to check on her. And mom was like, I got this, Spence. I got this. And Spence was like, everything going to be all right, okay? And she was like, yeah, I just said that, Spence. I, I got this. It's like, yeah, mom, you, you don't always be there. So, you know, what you want me to do, okay? <laughs> this is what I do too, mom. You know, I get it though. Respect. So then we see Asha back in the gym working out like a crackhead. And just like I thought, he's taking testosterone. You like 17. That's the last thing you need. Then we see back at the cotillion, Spence is walking Olivia in her new award to her car. And he's telling her how proud he is of her. And then he see a car lurking around the corner. 
And all I could think of from Friday, it ain't them niggas that act hard, y'all. <laughs> when they came around the corner and started shooting that. Okay, never mind. If you haven't seen Friday, then you don't know this reference. But I'm sure if you're watching this, then you've probably seen Friday. But either way, somebody starts busting out the car. It's a drive-by. Spencer jumps on top of Olivia and ends up getting shot. And that's where the episode goes off. And I said, so what y'all think y'all about to do? Y'all think y'all about to, like, shoot somebody and kill somebody every other week? Do y'all think we about to go through this with y'all All-American? Well, guess what? You're right. But I know one thing. Spencer better be okay. All right? Spencer better be okay. All right? Okay? All right. Anyhow. Oh, oh, oh. Is this going to be like a dead dad dream sequence when he's in the hospital? I hope we get a dead dad dream sequence because... Those are the best, even in real life. So, yeah, y'all. I love y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed the review. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share the video with your people. And I will see y'all in the next one. Peace out.